Sometimes when you're working with data, you want to see what might happen given certain variables. On the Data tab, you will find the button What If Analysis. What if analyses allow us to see what would happen if certain things were the case? There are three what if analyses, Scenario Manager, Goal Seek, and Data Table. I'm going to focus on Data Tables. Data tables allow you to put the different possibilities into a nice table format so that you can easily analyze the information. We'll start with a one variable data table and then we'll try a two variable. Our spreadsheet shows a basic income statement for a rafting business. Let's say we wanted to know how the number of customers the business has affects the net income. We could manually type the different possibilities into B7, which displays the average number of customers per day. So let's say we wanted to see how the net income changes with 50 customers. We would type 50, and then we'd look down at the bottom of our spreadsheet to see how the net income has changed. We could continue to do this with different average numbers of customers. But what if you wanted to see all of the possibilities at once, or you wanted to share those values with someone? You would not be able to do that easily using this method. Instead, we'll use a data table that will automatically calculate the results for us. We need to start by determining the different average number of customers per day we are considering and adding them to our spreadsheet. These are called substitution values and will be those same numbers that we would have typed into cell B7 if we were doing this manually. I will consider 40 to 60 customers in increments of 5. So I'll add those to my data table starting with 40. Now you could type these all in manually or you could copy them down. You can also come over to the Home tab and click on Fill Series. We're going to fill the series down the column Customers Per Day, so I'll choose Columns. Our step value is our increments, so that would be 5. We're doing this in increments of 5, so we should see 40, 45, 50, etc. customers per day. And our stop value is where we would like to end the series, which is 60 customers. And it fills in those values for us. Now I have to tell Excel what I am looking at for the result. We're looking to find the effect of changing the number of customers on the net income. So I need to include a cell reference to net income in my data table. I will put this at the top of my table. With the one variable data table, I can have multiple result cells. So in addition to net income, I could also include a reference to other cells as well, such as the expenses or the revenue. For now, I'll keep it simple and we'll just have the net income. To fill in the data table values, select all of your data and come back over here to the Data tab and click on What If Analysis and then choose Data Table. We are asked for a row input and a column input. These are cell references that tell Excel where to plug in the substitution values into the income statement. We only have one variable, so we won't need both the row and column input cells. Our data will use the column input cell since all of the substitution values are located in the same column. We can just click cell B7 to enter it as a column input cell. From here you can format these values. Let's just format them as a currency and we'll do zero decimal places. Alright, so you can see the net income for each of the customers per day uh, values that we put into our table. So if they have uh, 40 customers per day, their net income is about 25,000 and so on. 
Now let's try a two variable data table. In this table, we will look at the effect of both the average customers per day and the length of season on the net income. First, I will add the same values for customers per day that I had in the first table. So I'll just copy these since they're the same. Across the top of my table here in yellow, I will type in the values for my second variable. I'm going to look at the length of season in days and I'm going to look at 110 days, 120, 130, and 140. In this case, my result cell isn't going to go at the top of the table because we've already put another variable here. Uh, I notice I left the top left hand corner blank. This is where my result cell is going to go. Now you only have room for one result cell when you have a two variable data table. We're going to use net income again. So I will just do a cell reference to net income. Now we'll select all of the data. So we've got our variables and our cell references selected. And again, I'll open up the data table dialog box. So it's asking again for a row input cell and a column input cell. This time we do have two variables, so we'll have both of those. Uh, the length of season values are all found in the same row, so that's going to be my row input cell. And that's in B6. Again, we'll use average number of customers as my column input cell. Okay, from here we could format our data. We could use a custom uh, format to show uh, a label here instead of the uh, cell result. Uh, and just a few final comments on data tables. If you ever get stuck in a data table, let me show you an example of what that might look like. Okay, and you get this error. It says cannot change part of the data table. And you click OK, and then you try to move out of it, and it just keeps giving you this same error. So if you get stuck in this, just hit escape and then it will take you back to where you need to be and you can click around again. Uh, if you want to delete the values from a data table, uh, maybe you made a mistake and you just want to try it again, select all of the results and just hit the delete key. Not the backspace key, but the delete key. And that will delete all of your information.